Tracing real life drawings is a great way to practice using the shape tools and get the hang of the incredibly powerful and versatile pen tool in Pixelmator Pro. And don't worry if you think you're not that great at drawing, you can easily refine each line and shape as you draw so you don't have to get things right the first time. We've got a line drawing you can use to follow along with us, which you can download below. This tutorial assumes you've got some experience using the vector tools in Pixelmator Pro. If you're new or need a refresher, first check out our video on vector tooltips for beginners. We've now opened the illustration file and to make it easier to trace the sketch, we've created a version of it on a transparent background. That layer is at the top of the layer list so we can use it as a guide. Because we don't want to move or edit it, let's lock it. Now the first thing we can do is examine the drawing itself. Illustrations are commonly made up of a few main shapes and smaller ones that add detail, so we can try identifying the main shapes. In this drawing that would be the hair, head, arms, torso, legs and skateboard. We'll start with these main shapes and move on to the details later. Let's start by tackling the basic hair shape. We'll click to add our first point as a corner point, then add a few smooth points along the way. There's another corner point here, and a few more smooth points. Finally, when you reach the last point, you can click and drag it instead of simply clicking to turn it into an anchor point with direction lines. Then press and hold the Option key to break apart the direction lines and fix the part of the curve that moves towards the next point. Now that you've finished drawing the path, it's no longer editable by default. But if you'd like to refine it, you can control click it and choose Make Editable or press the Return key on your keyboard. Now, click to select the anchor point you'd like to refine and adjust the direction lines or the position of the point itself. Turn on the fill style for this layer and set its color to 67060D. Now would be a good time to draw the ear. We'll do this by subtracting one shape from another. In the tool sidebar, click to choose the shape tool, then click to select the ellipse shape and draw an ellipse where the ear should be. Select both layers in the layer sidebar, then control click one and choose subtract shapes. For simple round shapes like the head in this illustration, it would also be easier to use a basic ellipse shape rather than the pen tool. Let's draw another ellipse. The color we're using for the head is FF8860. To refine the shape of the head without having to adjust anchor points and direction lines, you can use the transform tool which works non-destructively with shape layers. Press the Command T keyboard shortcut, then resize and rotate the shape as needed. Add another ellipse for the nose, then resize and transform that. And finally, you can draw the neck shape using the pen tool, so press the P key and draw a kind of trapezoid shape. Now, in the layer sidebar, move all these shapes below the hair shape. We'll stick with the trusty pen tool for the skater's arms and torso, which will be one shape. We'll add our first point by the left arm, then add a few smooth points as we go along. The arm will be below the hand here, so we don't have to get this edge section exactly right. We also don't need to bother with the parts that will appear behind the skater's leg, so we can just leave that as a mostly straight segment. The color we're using for the arms and torso is FFB839.
Now, press the Escape key to deselect the currently selected shape so the next shape we draw isn't combined with this one. Then turn off the Fill Layer Style too, so we have just an outline. Next, let's draw the legs. We'll use two separate shapes this time. Let's start with the right leg. If you need to refine the shape after drawing it, control click it and choose Make Editable. For example, this time we did an extra point here, so we can control click the path and add it. Then refine the points and make sure the path follows the lines of the sketch closely. By the way, you can also double click part of a path to quickly add a new anchor point. Once you're ready, set the fill color to 0F9FA4. This is a flat illustration, so it doesn't have shadows in the classic sense, but we still need to add a sense of depth somehow. There are a few different ways to do this. We'll use a slightly darker color in certain areas, but not necessarily where actual shadows would fall. Press the Escape key and turn off the Fill Layer Style as before, and let's draw the second leg now. For any parts of the illustration that will appear behind other objects, remember that all you need to do is make sure that you don't leave any small gaps. So just make sure that the path goes well beyond the edges of the object in front. This time, set the color to 007477, slightly darker than the first leg. Now move the darker leg behind the lighter one in the layer sidebar. Another way to add some depth is using some darker shapes to act as shadows. Draw a kind of triangle shape using the pen tool, making sure the shadow is slightly larger than the area it should fill. Then set its color to F6, 8F, 0, 0. And finally, drag it to just above the body layer, then create a clipping mask. This way the shadow will fill the entire shape and you won't have to precisely draw its edges. That's about it for this section, let's move on to the skateboard. The skateboard itself is another relatively simple shape which the pen tool is perfect for. Again, start by simply tracing the sketch just like before. The color here is 50A6C7. We'll add some more depth here too. Press the Command J keyboard shortcut to duplicate the shape you just drew and set its fill color to 003A55. Press and hold the Command key, then drag the darker copy up a little. Then, in the layer sidebar, drag it below the original skateboard shape. Once you've done this, you'll need to edit the path of the darker layer manually to make it line up correctly with the ends of the lighter layer. For the wheels, a neat trick to getting a consistent cylindrical shape is to draw two ellipses and edit the anchor points of one of them to extend it back to the original. In order for your new shapes to appear above the skateboard, make sure to select the top skateboard layer in the layer sidebar. Then, press the Escape key so your new shapes don't get combined with it and select the Shape tool. Set the fill color to 92213A, then draw an ellipse where the wheel should be. Now transform it using the transform tool as we did before. Once you've done that, duplicate the ellipse using the Command J keyboard shortcut and move it to the right.
Make the right ellipse editable by pressing the return key, click the left anchor point to select it, then control click it and choose divide path. Move the two new anchor points towards the other ellipse. To make the shape closed again, control click one of the endpoints, choose start drawing and finish the path. Finally, change the color of the longer shape to FF1449 and in the layer sidebar, move it below the darker ellipse. To finish off the illustration, you can add some smaller details as well as a background. Be creative. We won't go over how to draw the entire illustration in this tutorial, but here's a time lapse showing how we've completed it. If you'd like to check out the finished artwork together with all the layers, you'll find the Pixelmator profile in the project files for this tutorial. The best way to learn is by trying to recreate what we've done. Do that by examining the illustration and the layers in the file and try to create each shape and path yourself. And here's the final visual. That looks great. If you like today's video and are looking for more Pixelmator Pro content, make sure to check out some of the other videos on our channel. And of course, you can always subscribe to get notified about new tutorials as soon as they go live. Thanks for watching.